Hello and welcome. In this video, I am going to show you how you can serve your cloud function locally. In the previous video, you might ask, it takes a lot of time, like every time you bring a small change, you have to deploy it in the Firebase, and then you check it there if it works or not. Especially when you are debugging your code, it is difficult to deploy your function every time, and it is going to take like at least one minute to deploy everything. So I will show you how you can serve your cloud function locally. If I come to my application here, Okay, I'm in the current directory here. So if I run npm run serve, this is going to run the surf. Uh, this is from Vue.js, so it will serve my application in the local host. So let's see how you can serve cloud function. You don't have to go to the cloud direct uh, to the functions directory. So before I do that one, I just want to serve it locally and see how it is going to work. Also, I have Postman open here, and I will show you how you can send uh, test uh, HTTP request to your cloud function locally. I will come to my application, and at the same time, I can open another tab here. The way you run is uh, you run uh, your functions locally is using the Firebase serve. Before that, we used to use like Firebase deploy, which was deploying, and serve is going to serve it locally. So you can say serve, and you can pass the flag of only functions and it is going to serve your firebase function uh, locally then you can have access to that one let's serve it and see and i'll show you how you can do it without passing the flag of only function and let's see how that is going to work so it is going to take a few seconds to run like it is going to check if you have the proper node or not and then it is going to give you this url here if i open the url here you go this is your cloud function URL and the local host in this port and this is going to watch for any changes you want so it just run everything here and everything is working fine so now you can see instead of writing our function here if I come to my mm, checkout here in the source directory uh, view we have the checkout you know in the previous video I told you that you can send a post request as soon as the component is created or someone visit this page it should send a post request to this url now what you can do is when you are developing locally you can send to this url and it should work the same way since this is localhost sometimes it gives you some weird error but it is just fine because of the https and http if you notice this one is https and this one is http and that is sometimes the difference but for debugging debugging purposes this is working fine and the reason I show you this is because so many times you want to debug you want to see how your data looks like before you do any other changes so that is how you do and if you come to the postman here you can paste the URL here send your request and it should work just fine and we are sending a post request this is what we get and the another another thing I am going to so that is like how you can serve your function locally. Now you don't have to do it. Okay, if I come here in the local host and this is going to be my view version of it. I will go to the checkout page and obviously if I see it is going to send the request to another URL. So let's see how if it is working if you send it to the, the new URL, to the one I have just copied. So I will come here, I will save it, it should serve it, and now it should recompile everything here. And as you may see, they are going to ask, uh, the Stripe is going to ask you that you are using HTTP instead of HTTPS, which is working fine. And if I click on the checkout, let's see if this is working correctly yes everything is working fine but you might be wondering if i come back to the checkout page there is something wrong like uh, so many people are confused i understand like why you are confu confused how you are going to do the checkout for now i can remove a product and it still it is going to check out the same product of course you will make it dynamic if you have like a little confusion of why i did in the previous video it is because i made you understand how everything is working behind the scene but in fact the way you get your session ideas when someone click on the checkout then it should create your session id and it, they should uh, send you to the checkout page which is not editable you cannot change anything here so this is the checkout page by stripe 
so that is uh, for this one and this was short and in, in the next video I will show you how you can send data to the server and using dynamic data you can let's say you have this product and you have to check out only this product not the one we have in the functions if I check out here this is what we have which is a t-shirt not a wash here also one thing else whatever data I send from here it should not go to the checkout I will explain more about this one one thing just I am going to tell you is and this is the only thing we send from here is the the product ID and the quantity that's all we sent I don't need the title I don't need the price because the user might change the price I don't need that I just need the quantity how many they want and I need the ID of this one then based on that I can take that product from database I can multiply the quantity by the price and then I can charge the user in the Firebase uh, cloud function so I hope it has been informative thank you for watching I hope it has been like something helpful and see you in the next video